Our next speaker served as Corporation Counsel at City Hall under Mayor Richard M. Daley. She served as Chief of Staff to First Lady Michelle Obama. She currently serves as a Senior Executive at the University of Chicago. But most importantly, she is a proud mother of Graham Moore, the Oscar winner for screen ad adaptation of The Imitation Game, and who gave a phenomenally courageous and inspirational speech about feeling different and not belonging. Ladies and gentlemen, Susan Schur. Susan? I will say as a parent, there's nothing better than when you're known as so-and-so's mom as opposed to, <laughs> so that, thank you, my personal PR agent, Jay Darty. I appreciate that. Uh, but we're here to talk about uh, Dr. Joanne Rooney. Uh, she was named the 24th president of Loyola University of Chicago in May 2016. She is the first lay president, first female president of Loyola. We could not be more proud of the fantastic job that she's doing at Loyola in her, now what is her sophomore year. She brings a range of experiences, including higher education, law, business, healthcare, and public service. In addition to serving as the university president at two institutions prior to Loyola, she was nominated by President Obama, confirmed by the U.S. Senate in May 2011, to serve in the Department of Defense, reporting to and acting as the senior advisor to the Secretary of Defense on matters involving civilian and military personnel and readiness. Mm -hmm. Joanne holds a doctorate in higher education from the University of Pennsylvania, an LLM in taxation from Boston University School of Law, JD from Suffolk University, an undergraduate degree in business and finance from Boston University, and I think that's it. <laughs> she currently serves on the board of trustees at Regis University, a Jesuit university in Denver, was recently named to the school board um, of the Archdiocese of Chicago. She's also a member of the Chicago Network, the Commercial Club, the Economic Club, and the University Club. Please join me warmly in welcoming uh, my friend and colleague, Dr. Joanne Rooney, to the podium. That was great. <laughs> Thank you, Susan, for that introduction. Jackie, for being our hostess today. And also, my deepest appreciation to President Doherty and Dr. Mazur, and especially the City Club of Chicago Board of Governors, for this opportunity to have some time with you this afternoon. As you heard, I'm now in my second year at Loyola. And I can truly say that the past 16 months or so since the announcement have been, to say the least, very full. But without question, I feel a sense of honor and privilege every single day to be part of such a wonderful university at this time and in this city of Chicago. Before I came to the city, however, and during my first few months, I did a little research, as someone new might do. And I asked many people, so what are the essential experiences in Chicago? Well, so far, I've chalked a few things off the list. And I have done my fair share of sightseeing and attendance at cultural performances, taking, of course, the architectural tours, being on the lake, visiting several museums, attending the symphony, the ballet, and especially experiencing music on a summer evening in Millennium Park. And yes, I'll admit, I've also sampled a few versions of Chicago pizza and some popcorn mixes to boot. 
Now, you know, there are many special days and experiences that stand out, and people ask me, so what are some of those? And I will tell you that absolutely the number one, and at the top of that list, is graduation for our students at Loyola. That is by far the best, <clears throat> the best of days and what makes this job so special. But there's a few others from this past year. Um, kind of like the tandem skydive from 13,500 feet, uh, ranking right up there at the top, but I have to admit, it caused a bit of consternation with some of my colleagues, and especially the board chair, when he heard I jumped out of a perfectly good airplane. <laughs> but there's another day that stands out near the top, and that was November 4th, 2016. And that's a special day for many reasons. Now, you heard there's a bit of a Boston background that I have, so I have to admit, I am a lifelong Red Sox fan. But many of my family were here, well, now, wait a minute. I'll get to that. <laughs> many of my family were in town at that particular time, and they told me they were actually here to celebrate my inauguration as president that was also held on the 4th of November. But honestly, between us, I think all 22 of them really wanted to be part of the five million people celebrating the World Series win by the Cubs. <laughs> yes, you know, it was a great day all around. And of course, I continue to add to my list of Chicago experiences. But I can only hope Maybe, maybe this year, we'll have a Red Sox-Cubs World Series. <laughs> but you know, one thing that's become abundantly clear, though, is time here with the City Club of Chicago is essential. So I need to thank all of you for being here today and for the invitation to be with you and spend some time with you today talking about my favorite subject, and that's Loyola University Chicago. Loyola University and the City Club share something very, very important. It's a long-standing and deep commitment to the common good in our great city. So in our time this afternoon, I'd like to share some thoughts about Loyola University, a bit of the past, much about the present, and especially a glimpse into the future. I want to share our view of the call to action that drives our work in each one of us every single day and how we continue bringing the commitment to this common good and our mission to be women and men for others together at the same time for the good of our collective future in this city our neighborhoods, and dare I say, beyond into the world. It's about working closely with Chicago's business and civic communities to make the common good in our city uncommonly better. Let me start by sharing a few facts about Loyola University. We are the only Jesuit Catholic university in the city of Chicago, and we are one of the largest Jesuit universities in the United States. In fact, we have the largest undergraduate population of all of the 28 Jesuit and colleges, colleges and universities in the US. We have been a part of this city since 1870. And we, like the city, have continued to grow and change in what can only be described as a dynamic way. We are located across multiple campuses. First, our Lakeshore campus, uh, the Chicago Edgewater and Rogers Park neighborhoods are our neighbors. Our Water Tower campus downtown, our Health Sciences campus west in Maywood, our Retreat and Ecology campus in Woodstock, Illinois, and our Loyola Lake County campus, which hosts primarily MBA and professional programs. But we don't stop just there. We also offer our students a broader worldview through global programs and campuses in Rome, Beijing, and Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. 
across all of these locations, we offer educational opportunities for every age and every stage of life and career, including an associate's degree program, more than 80 undergraduate majors, and 170 graduate and professional programs ranging from certificates through master's and PhD programs. But here at home, there is no question that we are investing in the neighborhoods where Loyolans study, work, and live. With more than 16,650 students and over 5,000 employees, we have the opportunity to make a real economic impact, and we do. More than 50% of our faculty and staff reside in the city, thanks in part to Loyola's assisted housing program that actually helps our employees defer some of the costs when they purchase a home in Chicago as their primary residence. Over the past 15 years, many of you have taken part in and frankly witnessed the investment of more than $700 million into new buildings, streetscapes, and campus edge improvements. And we have so often partnered with local developers to what can only be described as unlocking the potential of Loyola-owned land. And when our students graduate, they enter a proud global community of over 150,000 Loyola University Chicago alums, and many of you are here with us today. 85,000 of those alums live right here in Chicagoland. Our work every day is about education and our students. And our student body represents all 50 states and 105 different countries. And that's just within our more than 11,000 undergraduates. But over 90%, 90% of our undergraduate students need to receive some form of financial aid enabling them to attend Loyola. In addition, many of our students are often the first in their families to have the opportunity to attend and graduate from college or university. So that's us by the numbers. But as members of the Loyola family, and I know there are so many of you here today, I can't thank you enough for being here. You know we're proud of those numbers, however, what brings the heart and soul to Loyola is not the numbers, it's the people. What we find even more compelling, dare I say more life-changing than our economic impact, is our social impact. And that's made possible through an unwavering commitment to our Jesuit Catholic mission and an identity, and particularly because of the people who translate those ideals into action. Together, this is the heartbeat of Loyola University Chicago. This is what makes us different. This is what makes us unique. We exist as a diverse Chicago community and embrace that diversity as the very core of our strength. We work to expand knowledge in the service of humanity through learning, justice, and our faith. This is what we really mean by women and men for others. We care for the whole person, and that means morally, physically, and spiritually. In the union with the Jesuits, we call that cura personalis. It is this single focus that allows us to do one thing really, really well. Prepare people to lead extraordinary lives of leadership and service to others. So let me share some examples of this today, and examples of the people that make up the heartbeat of Loyola. Let's start with Alejandra. Alejandra was originally brought to the United States at the age of 14, and lived in Savannah, Georgia with her family. As a teenager, she overcame language barriers, and social obstacles and thrived in high school. She went on to college in Savannah where she worked tirelessly studying, 
assisting in conducting biomedical research and volunteering at a local clinic, educating the underinsured about disease prevention and often interpreting for Spanish-speaking patients. She began teaching herself sign language so that she could assist the hearing impaired as well. All the while, while she was in school and doing this amazing work, she cleaned houses and did countless odd jobs just to help pay the bills and make ends meet. But through it all, she attained a 3.5 grade point average, which she needed to do to keep her scholarship. In 2016, Alejandra received her bachelor's in chemistry. And today, we are so proud because she is a second year student at Loyola University Stritch School of Medicine. Alejandra has her sights on becoming an OBGYN, but particularly has her sights on being able to go back to Georgia and practice in underserved communities near her home. Just think and imagine the impact that Alejandra, the physician, will make on the world and the impact she will make for decades on people that may be on the margins. Then there is Mariana. Another amazing young woman, Mariana graduated last May with a bachelor's in political science. She addressed her fellow classmates at the commencement ceremony on behalf of the College of Arts and Sciences and recalled a journey, a long journey, that brought her to Loyola University Chicago. Born in Matamoros, Mexico, as a schoolgirl, she saw many children her age who could not go to school because their families needed them to work just to help put food on the table. Early on, she and her family recognized the importance of an education and also realized it was not a guarantee for everyone. Mariana recalled during her commencement remarks that her mother told her a college education would provide a pathway for her to fulfill her goal of leading a life with purpose. But education required work and self-discipline. And if she did well, when she did well and succeeded, she would be the first in her family to ever earn a college degree. Yes, Mariana admits that at times she became discouraged. And she had moments of self-doubt, but there she stood at graduation. She did it. In addition, this past spring, many of us shared tears of joy with Mariana when she took her oath of citizenship to become a US citizen, a lifelong dream, and then followed, obviously, a few months later by graduation where she earned her degree. When Mariana spoke to the audience filling our arena on that day of graduation, she talked about her awakening to social justice that happened during her time at Loyola. And she realized that her education and her experiences at Loyola and in our community enabled her to find her voice. And she knew she will be an agent for change and actively participate in any way she can and change the status quo. That should all serve her very well as she pursues her next goal of law school. Then it's about our entire faculty and staff in the School of Education. In May of 2012, Mayor Emanuel announced a unique partnership between Loyola University Chicago and Nicholson High School, in which our Loyola School of Education committed to working with the SEN principal, the administrative team, and faculty to help support the academic achievement, should I say lift the academic achievement of the students at Sen High. Going strong to this day, this partnership model exemplifies how academic research and experiences can translate into practical improvements and transformation for individuals, families, and neighborhoods. Mary Beck, our partner and the principal at Sen High says, SEN students are learning from Loyola students. Loyola students 
are learning from SEND teachers, and our SEND teachers are learning from Loyola faculty members. Loyola's presence is felt throughout SEND, and the community is stronger because of it. Then it's about Neil, our soccer coach, who recently spent over four minutes of a five-minute address to an audience talking about a, tr a trip the team took to Peru last year. <coughs> the poorest neighborhoods in Peru. He could not say enough about the wonderful service the young men, every one of them, on that team undertook in those very impoverished neighborhoods in Lima. How they worked to build shelters and fix and clean areas just to create a sense of pride in the communities. And how these young men engaged in pickup soccer games with the local children who didn't have much in the way of material goods, but had a love of game and connected with these young men from Chicago in an incredibly special way. Likewise, when you speak to the players on this team, the first topic is not about soccer. It is about how each of them feels so transformed by the experience in ways they never anticipated. It's about acknowledging how this ser shared service actually brought them together as a team in a special way that innumerable practices and matches could never do. Oh, and so that I don't forget, the team also went on to win the NCAA tournament last year as national champions. <laughs> but you know, it's just an afterthought to the real experience and, and almost a footnote to the coach's comment and those of those great young men. And then it's about Bob an experienced history professor in his 29th year of teaching. Bob gets so excited and looks forward to the first day of class each fall semester when he gets to greet brand new freshmen to their first college class ever. And yes, it's one of those core requirements. But he gets so excited. You can witness firsthand how these students are coming into class, they're tentative, they're reserved, they're anxious, they're looking for the room, they don't know where they are. Maybe they're a little excited, and they're even questioning, why do I have to take this course? However, within the first few minutes, Bob makes world history come alive in ways that match today's headlines and have a relevancy to the future careers that these students follow. Very quickly, this entire room of brand new freshmen realized that understanding events that took place hundreds of years ago directly impacts our public policy discussions today and their ability to be future advocates and leaders in any field. And finally, it's certainly about Asia a young Chicago woman who recently graduated from Arupe College, sharing her journey and that of her classmates as she addressed them on their graduation day this August. She shared a time when she questioned whether continuing in the program was worth it. How she decided and admitted to skipping class one day to ponder the next step not certain that she was going to return to a group A and complete her degree. She described, as she said, and felt, in her own words, just being beige, lacking in color and vitality and energy, just feeling beige. So sitting along that lake the day she skipped class, she realized that she was just going through the motions, and maybe feeling that class was something you just had to go to for the sake of getting it done. But if she was going to become the vivid color that she wanted, the reason she came to Arupe to start, she knew it was all up to her to take control. It was about realizing she needed to harness the power of her education to make a difference. So yes. She did finish her degree at Arupe this August, but she is not done. 
She is presently in her junior year at Loyola, studying in our business school. Believe me, if you meet Asia, you realize beige is no longer a color in her world, nor in anyone that's around her. So I can go on and on, yet Asia's story and many of the others I cited also gives us a glimpse into the future. The future of higher education and the future of Loyola University Chicago. At Loyola, our mandate is to continue going to the frontiers where others have not gone. To reach out to the most marginalized people in our city and our world and to fearlessly address some of the toughest challenges in society. Yes, we must risk discomfort. We must confront ambiguity to redefine what is possible and then take action. But how? How can we even begin to do that? What challenges face us and so many other institutions in the future? How do we ensure continued financial stability and agility to meet new demands? How do we ensure the highest academic quality and effectiveness in a dynamic, changing, technology-driven world? How do we respond when the value of a higher education is being challenged at its very core? How do we embrace the changing student demographics knowing that over 61% of undergraduate students will be over the age of 25 or older by 2019? How do we embrace innovation as a path to the future and display the courage, creativity, and, decisive, and decisiveness to make it happen? How do we ensure that our Jesuit Catholic mission remains steadfast in the, as the foundation for our research, teaching, and service, frankly, as the foundation for everything we do. We want to always be present in the moment and cherish that gift, but we recognize that our future also must begin at this moment as well. Yes, the numbers, the financials are important now and in the future, and many of us have heard that saying, no margin, no mission. But for us, it is about continuing the discipline and stewardship of resources already in place, but enhancing our decision-making sophistication and effectiveness through implementation of multi-year strategic financial planning and dynamic data analysis. But that's just the first step. Our most creative ideas, best devised plans, and most detailed analyses are empty dreams without the people required to lead those efforts. We believe as persons for others, it must all start by focusing attention on our students, on meeting our students where they are, and educating them for what the world of tomorrow needs. Our recent graduates of this class of 2017 are entering careers and jobs that didn't even exist 10 years ago. And we are so acutely aware that in five years, most of those jobs today will either not exist or be dramatically different. So we are continuously adopting curriculum and off making offerings to prepare our students to meet the demands and expectations of a 21st century workforce. Our job is to provide relative and transformative education to all our students by shaping them into people who have skills, knowledge, heart, and frankly, grit to make a difference on the frontiers of society. At the same time, though, we're seeking to better understand and appreciate the diversity and range of perspectives in the no national, local, and global conversation. We must continue to lead at Loyola in the modeling of civil discourse. We must present opportunities to our students, faculty, and staff, and broader community to engage in ways that encourage vibrant, inclusive, and respectful exchanges of varying perspectives and ideas. 
We must hone the skills of critical thinking, analytical reasoning, and effective communication in all our students, and dare I say, shape and sharpen those same skills in ourselves. <clears throat> we know in these turbulent times that God is already there ahead of us. We just need to pay attention and respond to that presence. Access, access to affordable education is near the top of the list of challenges and opportunities for colleges and universities around the country and especially for us at Loyola. We work very hard at Loyola to keep costs low and challenge ourselves to be as efficient and effective as possible and good stewards of our resources. We are continuously looking for ways to expand our external support for scholarships, but we also stay very, very vigilant on the amount of debt levels we allow our students to carry. We are working to reimagine the traditional path from secondary to post-secondary education, particularly for first-generation students, and especially those from families with very limited financial means. Our Arupe College model is just such a program. And some of you may have heard Father Steve Katsouris, our founding dean of Arupe, speak about this very program several weeks ago here at the City Club. Or you may have read about it in the Chicago Tribune. He is here for us today. And I promised I would make yet another plug for his book, <laughs> How the Jesuits Reinvented Education Again. <laughs> If you want a first-hand account of this magnificent program, I encourage you to read it. And I'll repeat a comment from one of our Jesuits. There is no better story in higher education right now than Arupe. We are continuously looking for ways to bring together various academic disciplines to solve vexing issues. Whether it's bringing our social work and sociology faculty together with healthcare professionals, to better support the implementation of telemedicine in rural areas. Whether it's bringing our environmental sustainability faculty together with the business school to foster true social impact and responsibility with those same leaders. And it is about seeking out critical partnerships, not just inside the university, but outside of Loyola, to take action and lead long-term change again as I would say each one of us are called to do. We are focused on the future, yes, but we are working to begin shaping that future every single day by tapping into the expertise and utilizing the resources of the university to strengthen our communities. Let me give a few examples of that work that's ongoing today and does start to bring us into that glimpse of the future. Last year, we created the Center for Criminal Justice Research Policy and Practice with the goal of improving the quality and administration of criminal and juvenile justice in Chicago and throughout the state. We are honored to be working with other community partners on the anti-violence initiative convened by Cardinal Blaise Supic in the Archdiocese of Chicago. This critically important work is designed to break the violence-causing cycle of despair, racism, and poverty in our city. Our ability to bring together and coordinate many academic disciplines across Loyola through our Center for Urban Research and Learning has been an invaluable resource for so many of these works. CURL as we refer to it, has been cited numerous times for their groundbreaking work, not just locally, but on a national level. And this type of multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary programming is very much a model for the future throughout higher education. We continue to work with Cook County to better understand and improve how the juvenile system responds to young adults. And as part of this effort, we are collaborating with one of our Loyola alum, Cook County Sheriff Tom Dart, who stood at this program and this podium back in May. We have just begun working with our partners at Trinity Health and Loyola Medicine in the area of big data analysis. By examining and analyzing the data across the entire system, 
and network, we anticipate being able to impact the delivery of care to patients. Frankly, the care you, me, and all of our families will receive in the future, whether that's through better pre- and post-op care, changing protocols on ventilator usage, timing and dosage of medicine, all aspects of this work promise to be truly transformational for healthcare delivery. And finally, there's our community work on sustainability. Mayor Emanuel set a goal for Chicago to become the greenest city in the world. And we are embracing that initiative to help work together and bring that goal to a reality. In 2013, the Institute for Environmental Sustainability under the guidance of Dr. Nancy Tuckman was started. The Institute provides us with a launch pad from where we work to create solutions addressing the stress on our planet's natural resources and expand important knowledge through teaching, conducting research, and sponsoring outreach activities on pressing environmental issues. Though relatively young, the faculty, staff, and students have received numerous awards and recognitions on a local, national, and now even international stage. Few projects right now that touch the Chicago community. First is our Chicago Public Schools Drinking Water Project. The idea being in working in collaboration to eradicate any lead in the drinking water of the 527 campus CPS system. Then there's the West Pullman Neighborhood Revitalization Project, where the work is all about soil remediation that uses plants to take the heavy metal toxins like lead and mercury from the soils in empty lots throughout historic West Pullman. This will help accelerate the revitalization of that neighborhood. There is so much more, as you can tell, that I can touch on that covers every single corner of the university. However, I trust that the stories shared and the examples cited provide you with a good sense of the kind of work underway at Loyola University today and where our path is guiding us in the future. But I cannot be emphatic enough in stating how much we value the past and current support you have all provided and our community has provided, but also how much we will rely on that support to continue into the future. So as I conclude, I will ask you to consider a few ways we can build on our work together and strengthen our partnerships. First, and this should come as no surprise, I am the university president after all, and I spend a great deal of time hanging out with the Jesuits, we welcome your philanthropy, your money. <laughs> I might be able to say it more delicately, but frankly, there is no substitute for financial support, particularly to fund our student financial aid, educational access goals, and future initiatives. Remember I said 90% of our undergraduates must rely on aid in order to be able to attend Loyola University. Second, if you know of qualified applicants, whether that's prospective students, faculty, or staff, who might be interested in joining Loyola University Chicago and our family, we welcome your referrals. Third, when you are looking for great interns and full-time employees, please include Loyola University Chicago students and alums on your short list. They are a remarkable resource, well prepared to serve, grow, and lead your organizations. And finally, I hope you will continue to get to know us even better and work with us to spread the excitement about and the impact of Loyola University far and wide. We are not the type of university that keeps our students, faculty, and staff cloistered away pondering the world. Instead, we are out in our city, we are out in our communities, and we are out in the world. Our, our founders, St. Ignatius, love the cities and their peoples and their problems, but also the vitality of the city. 
He always placed early Jesuit institutions in the center of cities. We are part of Chicago and we are so proud of it. We teach our students that education is the single most powerful tool they have to transform not just themselves, but their city, their communities, and their neighborhoods. We teach them what it means to take the harder road and continue with persistence and tenacity. To us, this is what it means to prepare people to lead extraordinary lives and become women and men for others. As I conclude my remarks, I'm reminded of the way St. Ignatius would sometimes sign his letters. He often ended his letters to St. Francis Xavier with the Latin expression, ite inflammate omnia, or go forth, set the world on fire. Now, I do know Chicago has some well-known history in that department, <laughs> dating back to 1871, <clears throat> but I will assure you this is not what St. Ignatius meant. What he did mean was to set out a direct challenge for all of us, go forth and make a real and lasting difference. Our goal at Loyola, Loyola University Chicago today and in the years ahead is that all of us go forth and set the world on fire together. Thank you very much. All right. Um, okay. Um, Michael Admiris, we did not acknowledge you. Chancellor UIC and City Cup speaker, where are you? Oh, there you are. I talked to you. Yeah, I talked to you earlier. I love the way we see the academia uh, folks supporting each other. It's just wonderful. You can clap. Really, you can clap for that. not enough elected officials in the room today. How many Loyola, just a show of hands, uh, alum do we have here? Wow. That's pretty cool. We are really pressed for time, but I think Dr. Rooney just uh, provided enough information for all of us to go away and be even more impressed with Loyola than we are, or if we weren't on our, already. Um, Anthony? Labello, you are a member. Smith Group, are you here? And you're a member way back there? <laughs> well, you must have called for your seat late or something. <laughs> uh, this is kind of a, a, I think this is a really easy question I'm going to start with. Will Iola continue to grow in enrollment? Yes. <laughs> Pretty easy question. Peter Coffey, where are you? Peter says, he would like to say, this isn't for you, I'm just gonna make a public service announcement, I guess. Okay. Would you like to say, would like to, what would you like to say to the officials, the elected officials here today, and those who aren't about the importance of the MAP program, is that what, okay. <laughs> I promise you I wouldn't ask some stuff, but you know. Well, and actually, they're going to accuse me of being a broken record because I think I met with every single one of them more than once. Uh, and actually, at this point, it's about saying thank you uh, and really acknowledging how important our state support for our students coming from here in the form of MAP grants really is. Most people sometimes don't realize MAP grants don't come to the universities. The MAP grants go to the students and then they in turn are able to take it where they want to go to school. So the importance and the support of higher education and supporting our students with that financial aid cannot be understated. Thank you elected officials for a tremendous amount of hard work uh, to get that over the finish line and we'll be back at it, thank you. And doctor, I believe a few of the elected officials are Loyola, are Loyola students currently, right? And alums, yes. And alums too, right? Okay. 
just giving you guys Rambler's yeah. plugs, you know. Uh, John Chikau, is that, am I saying that right? Is that correct? Good for you, Jackie. Uh, Magnificent Mile Association is his affiliation. What are your thoughts and can you talk about engaging um, with the business community um, along with Loyola's overall mission, the social justice, the um, education, faith, and service collaboration? Yeah. Absolutely. I just mentioned a few of those partners in collaboration, but there, there are a number of other ways that our business school is working directly with uh, the business community. One is often to respond to that request of being able to engage with sustainability, which is not something that was always a formalized program. And I mentioned a little bit about how our Institute of Environmental Sustainability is teaming with our business program, in particular at the graduate level, to be able to provide some educational connections for some of the leadership that will be going into companies and corporations who are embracing this idea that it is about being in a sustainable environment in the communities. That's one way. Second of all, we are working with developing a small business collaboration so that we will actually have, if you will, a, a clinic of sorts set up with students and faculty where they will work on real world projects to help people starting small businesses, basically as an incubator, to get them started and provide some of the background and the tools that they might not be able to go out and, if you will, purchase or hire consultants or staff on, we're able to work with them in selective ways to be able to bring those initiatives forward, whether it's marketing, whether it's financial planning, and those pieces. We are looking to further expand some of that formal academic programming, but honestly, the second part is really about those collaborations to be able to work with the business community to pr place our interns, and then also see it as a place where our graduates can go. So I think you're gonna see a lot more of the outreach to the business community, but those are three quick ones, and it's really at the top of our list with our business school dean and some of the joint programs about how we can better engage with the business community on, on joint initiatives. So stay tuned, because there's a lot more, and we'll be also looking on in terms of some of our advisory boards and some of the other ways at the university to connect our business community, and so we're sure we're partnering and we're responding to the needs, both in terms of employees, but also the challenges in the community. So I think I'm most impressed by the fact that folk at Loyola are way smarter than a whole lot of us, but um, the fact that we have a clear collaboration between business, education, um, not-for-profit, social services. We only do that stuff in Chicago, right? You were supposed to say yeah. I don't know, this academia crowd, I don't know, you guys. I don't know. Dr. Rooney, we can't thank you enough. Um, there's a couple of things that, first, um, you will be receiving the 